Good morning, folks. Hopefully you got a chance to see last night's upload on tracking the powerful sunspot while on the far side of our star. We've got some minor space weather to discuss as we wait for it, and some incredible links coming up after. Let's get to it over at spaceweathernews.com. We're going to see the Earth-facing disk remain very calm, no solar flares and no CMEs, large dark coronal holes and a thinner plasma filament between them. Solar wind calming nicely at Earth now, Purple, plasma speed dropping to ambient quiet, but we do expect to see a coronal hole stream intensify the telemetry as early as Sunday night, and more likely into Monday. We did have a minor lithospheric watch as this coronal hole's IMF and kinetic alpha waves are already affecting the planet. Most significant rumble of the day wasn't the biggest, but anything at 5 range on the U.S. West Coast is well above average and worth noting. The region jumped from being on secondary alert to high alert with that shake. So first up on our link list today is a story about binary galaxies. Hubble calls these David and Goliath. Essentially, with all of the stories of galactic mergers and other interactions with dwarf galaxies or other structures like our own galaxy's Magellanic Clouds, one must begin to wonder if there is a team effort to this galaxy thing like we see with many, if not most, stars being binary. Something to consider as the Milky Way is actually in the throes of merging with the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy. Let's come in a bit closer to home where an asteroid flyby October 12th is going to be a major effort for the planetary defense systems to test their tracking and location skills for future missions. It's only about 10 to 30 meters across. And the Little Rock has been out of telescope view since 2012, but will be seen again soon as it comes in for close approach just 4,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. Finer detail will come when they reestablish visual contact, Pretty cool little story to keep our eyes on as we head towards the end of northern summer. Last up on the link list is this. Folks, just a 250 meter swath of land. Lasers were used to capture the most fine of detail over the ice. In fact, the airplane flew this mission over the exact same area at least twice, once in 1998 with the preliminary altimeter data and again with the lasers in 2013. What they're discovering is the caving front is moving backwards. It might appear that the entire land mass has just sunk by a wide margin, and in a way that's true, but just locally. Think of it more like standing on the edge of a sinkhole that keeps expanding. One day the ground could be 50 feet lower than where you were standing yesterday. Except what we're looking at here isn't a sinkhole, it's just the caving of a major ice front. At the end of these sequences, they overlay the camera views that took while gathering the altimeter data, and this really helps put into perspective exactly how much might be inferred from just the raw data points without the visual image. Let's quickly jump now to Istanbul, where they're getting pounded yet again. For the second time in as many weeks, there was flash flooding and potentially damaging hailstones. Istanbul is not well set up for a major pattern shift. And speaking of those, let's also quickly pull the East Asian wind maps because Taiwan's going to get hit by two different typhoons in one day. Prayers, best wishes, positive affirmations, whatever you got for those living in the bullseye. Folks, on today's episode of Fly on the Wall, we'll be discussing the big sunspot heading round to face Earth again, how high activity should be gauged amidst Earth-facing quiet and the march to solar minimum, more on cosmic rays, and we dive deep into that geoengineering sky spray story we shared earlier this week. At suspiciousobservers.org, then click premium in the menu, then fly on the wall. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.